Hello, Precalculus students. This is Ms. Stone. We're going with our Section 4.8 lesson on applications and models. For example one, we have a small correction here on your worksheet. I have a lowercase a, but we actually want to make that a capital A to stand for the angle. And of course, an angle is always opposite that side. So I'm going to go ahead and mark angle A as the 30 degree angle in this. And then side B has a length of 10. I like to mark up my diagrams as much as possible. And we're asked to find the missing side and the acute angles. Well, obviously the last angle that's left has to be the remainder of a triangle. And with 180 degrees, we could take 180. But of course, 90 degrees was already used up. So we have uh, 90 minus. go back and put those angles in, 90 minus 30, which gets us the 60 degree angle. Thanks for your patience there. All right, so um, we know about 30 to 60, 90 degree triangles. That one side, in fact, the side opposite the smallest angle, so opposite the 30 degree angle, is always considered x where the hypotenuse is considered 2x, which would be great if we knew either one of those sides. But we do know about the third side here, and that's in a relationship of x root 3. So I'm just going to do a little algebra here on the side and say that x root 3 equals the length of 10, which is the information we were given. So to solve for x, I would divide by that root 3 and, of course, rationalize. It's a 3. Okay, so now if this side is 10 root 3, um, I'm sorry, if x is 10 root 3 over 3, I can put that on the side A, and then I just need to double that value to get over here. So 2 times 10 root 3 over 3, which makes 20 root 3 over 3. So I think we're all set. So we have angle B is the one that's opposite side B and that was 60 degrees, and side A was the one across from the smallest angle, so it was the smallest side, or X in my um, notation of 30, 60, 90, and side C, which was the hypotenuse, was double side A, and we already knew side B. All right, fantastic. That is an example, however, um, I'm sorry, that just erased a minute. So back up the video if you need to see that one again. All right, let's go into some word problems here. I am kind of a stickler. If you're asked a question in a word problem, then you should answer it in a sentence as well. So in the end, they ask us for the, the height from the top of the ladder to the ground. So I'm going to go ahead and make my height over here, and I can call it H. If you prefer to call it Y, that's fine too. I'm going to go ahead and put this ladder up against the wall. 90 degree angle there for its height, and they said that it was at a 74 degree angle. I know that the ladder is 16 feet in length. That becomes my hypotenuse. So I'm going to try to pick the most appropriate trig word that would work here. Now they're calling this angle of elevation. That means it's elevated from the ground, but remember I've also talked to you guys about how because with alternate interior angles being congruent, People also sometimes call things angles of depression, but you can always put it in the bottom corner um, of the triangle. So what I have here is I'd like to know information about the opposite side from the angle, 74 degrees, and I know about the uh, hypotenuse. So for me, that's a, tang uh, that's a sine problem, sorry. So sine of 74 degrees is going to be the height over 16. If you multiply both sides by 16, Sorry, I didn't need to write the word sign. Now, why does it go away? Let me catch up here. All right, try again. Sine of 74 degrees equals h over 16, which is 16 times the sine of 74 degrees. Please make sure that you're in degree mode in your calculator, okay? And also, as you're rounding, if we were round to the nearest foot, 
that means no decimals at all, you would call it 15 feet. But if I was asking you to round to the nearest tenth, you'd have to round to one decimal place, which would be called 15.4 feet. So depending if it matters or if it's stated, um, otherwise just make sure that you've got good rounding. So in the end, I'm going to say the height from the top of the ladder to the ground is, and then pick whichever answer that you're going with. I'm going to go with 15.4 feet. I'm going to go one decimal point. Okay, to the tenths. Fabulous. Let's try the next example. I'm sorry that that keeps uh, erasing every time I scroll up. This one talks about uh, from a point 65 feet in front of the church. So we're going to go ahead and draw a building. That'll be my church. I'm not the best artist, as you'll see, but I'll go ahead and make it a brick church. There you go. And 65 feet in front of the church is my first amount my length along the x-axis, and it says that there's two different angles of elevation. Again, elevating meaning to go up from the ground. So it says to the steeple. Now a steeple is typically like a high point. Um, maybe there's a bell tower or something up there. So I'll just make it a little triangle up there. So if I look to the base of that steeple, that's my smaller angle. That's my 35 degree angle. But if I look to the very top of the steeple, that's what they mean by uh, 35 degrees and 43 degrees respectively. So this whole bigger angle, that's 43 degrees. The smaller one was 35. So sometimes to help me in this kind of jumble, I might split it up into two of its own pictures. The first one with the 35 degrees, and that has the same height of the building, but it also has a height of the steeple. So I'm going to change my H. I know in the last problem I made the uh, height of the building, of the house uh, BH, but now I'm going to go ahead and let that be the height of the steeple. So you know what? I'm going to go ahead and say the height of the church is actually Y. So in my first triangle, the 35 degree angle is going up Y. But my second triangle, it's going to go all the way to the top of the steeple. That's going to have a larger angle, a 43 degree angle. And its height is going to be the Y, the the height of the church plus the H, which is the steeple. So I'm going to call this Y plus H. There are other ways that you could do this problem. This is just uh, one suggestion to use a little algebra and set them equal to each other. So basically I'm going to solve for Y and either do a substitution or set them equal to each other. So it looks to me like both of these, since 65 is the horizontal length of the distance that we were away from the church, um, we can go ahead and use tangent for both. So the tangent of 43 degrees is the opposite value, which is called y plus h over 65. And then the tangent over here is 35 degrees equals y over 65. Remember that was to the base of the steeple, so it didn't have any extra height. If I go ahead and solve this um, for h, which is what I wanted to find out, I would multiply by 65 and I would subtract the y so that I have h equals, because that's really what I want to find, right? Minus y. I can go ahead and solve for y over here and just do a quick substitution. So all of this can be substituted right there for y. And then I can just put it right into my calculator, 65 times the tangent of 43 degrees, hey, make sure you're in degree mode, minus 65 times the tangent of 35 degrees, and that should get me my height. As I looked at this, if I was rounding just to one decimal place, it would be 15.1. If I'm looking at my units, this is a height. I was originally given height in, uh, or distance in feet, so I'm going to do my height in feet, and I will answer it in a sentence. The height of the steeple, is 15.1 feet. No question about it. All right, fantastic. Let's try a couple more examples here before we wrap up the video. I'm going to scroll up and it might erase. I apologize. The next one um, is finding an angle of depression. But remember, really, angle of depression is the same as the angle of elevation. 
because of alternate interior angles are congruent. Now I'm not the best artist, so when I draw my airplane on this one, pardon me. So angle of depression is typically defined as from the horizontal going out to the ground. So typically what I would do is I would say, oh, okay, this is the angle of depression. That's a P. But really, if I'm going to go ahead and draw the triangle, because of alternate interior angles, it's also this angle down here, which people usually call the angle of elevation. So the number that they give you can always go in the bottom. Okay? And they're asking me to find that angle. I'm going to call it theta. And the runway is off here to the side. This is where the plane is going to land. All right, so I have 100 feet into the air for the airplane and 1,600 feet to the runway as the horizontal amount. So just like in the last problem, I think the most appropriate trig word is tangent. So if I set the tangent of my angle that I don't know equal to the opposite value, which is 100, divided by the adjacent value, which is 1,600, Oh, I want to get into that theta. So I'm going to use inverses because the inverse actually crosses out the tangent. But of course we balance and do things on both sides. So I'm going to take the inverse tangent of 100 over 1600. Please check that you're in degree mode. And I ended up with an angle of 3.58 degrees. And I would answer this in a sentence saying the plane's angle of descent, which is also called depression, is 3.58 degrees. Now this time I chose to go um, to the hundredths place, two decimal points, because I felt that um, it was most appropriate. I'm going to scroll up, it might erase. Oh, it stayed this time. All right, and then we want to talk about bearings. When uh, people do bearings, it's actually different than how we've been doing unit circle or even reference angles where we're measuring from the horizontal. This is always gone, uh, always measured from the north and south. I know this is different than what we've done in terms of reference angles. So an example like this, north 25 west, means that you're going to initially be facing north. Here's this one down here initially facing north, and then you move 25 degrees towards the west. There's your 25, west being to the left. Let's try something different. How about if I say um, south 25 degrees west? What that really means is start facing the south, so I draw my initial side, and then you go towards the west. Again, the west is here on my left side, so it's only going to be 25 more degrees here. So that would be facing south and then going towards the west, those 25 degrees. Let's try one more. Maybe pause the video and give this a try yourself. If I said south, 25 degrees east. We would draw our initial side going south, only a small 25 degrees. And this would be south 25 degrees going east. Now in air navigation, sometimes the bearings are measured clockwise, not counterclockwise as we've been doing in our unit circles, but clockwise. So something like this, if I ended up in that same position I was talking about before, remember how that was 25 degrees west of south? We would actually call this, starting from the north and going clockwise, it would be 180 degrees plus that extra 25. Sometimes in air navigation, when they're giving their bearings, they do it from the north. So this would be 205 degrees. And then one last example here. What if it was like my last one above, where I had the 25 degrees east of south? Remember we talked about that? I would call that, in terms of air navigation, 180 minus 25 degrees. And that is the end.